Hello, everybody. My name is David Runo. I am from the data school Down Under. I am from the third cohort of the Sydney office. I am here today to talk to you about dashboard actions in Tableau. Now, dashboard actions are basically when you have a dashboard like this and you have multiple sheets. When you set up an action, you set it up so that when one of these one of these sheets is clicked on, it produces an effect that is visible on the dashboard. So as you can see here, as I click each of these different sections, I'm producing some type of effect. For this one, I'm for today's lesson, I'm going to be showing uh, bear attacks in America from 1900 to, uh, I believe, 2020. I understand that the topic is a little bit grisly but bear with me and I'm sure we'll be able to have an informative time regardless. So there's four different types of actions I'm going to be covering today. Filter actions, go to sheet actions, parameter actions, and web actions. So the one that you've just seen in play there is a filter action. So we've got three different types of bear here. And when I click on this bar, it will filter out on the chart below just to the particular type of bear that I'm selecting. So if I select the black bears here, I can see all the black bears lit up. If I select the brown bears here, I can see all the brown bears are lit up. And if I select the polar bears here, I can see all the polar bears are lit up. So how would I set up this effect? So if I just go up here to dashboard, click on that, select actions, you will see I've got a filter set up here. So I'm just going to remove this for now. And then add that back in again. So as you can see, I've got six different options here. Filter, highlight, go to URL, go to sheet, change parameter and change set value. Highlight is essentially identical to filter in terms of setup. It's just that rather than removing records that aren't selected in your filter, it will just cause those records to light up. So we're just going to uh, select filter to start. Now here we've got quite a few things. So I'm just going to take this right from the top. First, the name, you know, give it a good name. Bear filter, let's say. Pretty nice and simple. You want it to be something that you will be able to understand what you're talking about when you come back to this, you know, however long from now. Then you have your source sheets. You can select here whether you're going to do it based on the data set, based on a dashboard, or based on a worksheet. We're doing it based on this dashboard and we're only keeping it to this dashboard. So we're going to select P1 filter actions. So now I've set it up so that I can tell by the title here, what these are. So I'm going to deselect individual bear attacks and next page. What this all means is that the source sheet, it will be looking, this filter will work by selecting specifically bear fatalities by type of bear. It's not going to affect anything else. Now over here, we have three more options. We can run the action on hover, select or menu. Normally, for most cases, you will be running select. Hover will just cause it so that as soon as your mouse is on top of the object, it will filter it or highlight it or whatever you choose to do. Menu will cause it that when you click on it, you will get a link specifically to trigger the action. So I would recommend most of the time that you will be using select, but it's worth understanding those other two as well. Lastly, down the bottom here, you can see it says run on single select only. That basically means that you will be, whether you're clicking exactly one item or clicking multiple. Normally, there's no harm in just, you know, being able to click multiple. So we're going to leave that as, you know, you can select multiple if you so desire. So next we have the target sheets. These are the sheets that are going to be affected by the action. Once again, because we want this on the same dashboard, we're going to keep that there. And then I'm going to deselect the bare fatalities and the next page. So that means that this is going to be sourced from one dash, one worksheet, and it's going to affect one worksheet. Uh, this here is particularly important. Um, this is what determines what happens when you walk away from the filter. So are you going to just leave the filter as is? 
Are you going to have it show all values? We're going to have it exclude all values. Most of the time, again, you're going to want to have it set as show all values. Lastly, here we can set whether we want it to work off specific fields specified or off all fields. Because this particular, because this particular source sheet is very simple, we're not going to have to worry about that in this situation. If you did need to do that though, you'd go selected fields, add filter, and find the specific data source to and from you want to go with. Again, we don't have to worry about this in this case. We're just going to go to all fields. Now that I've got that set up, you can see that this is looking very nice indeed. So we've got name, what it's running on, where it's sourced, and the fields affected in very much shorthand. And now that I've hit that, you'll see that I can click this and each one is getting filtered. Just to quickly demonstrate uh, the difference between the different types and to show that I didn't just do nothing there because I know it was working when I started. If I switch it to hover, go okay, okay. Now I don't even have to click, just mousing over will produce the effect of shifting it. So, just set it back to work on select. So, the next thing that I'm going to talk about is the go to sheet action. So, you might have noticed up here, I've got a next page set up. What I'm going to do with this is that I'm going to set it up so that when I click on it, it will take me to the next page. Quite simple. So we're going to open up dashboard again, go down to actions. You can also use control shift D. I just prefer to do it this way. Simple force of habit, maybe. We can go add action, go to sheet. So as you can see, it's a simplified version of what we were having before. Um, we're going to go Bear fatalities protect bear, not necessary. Individual bear attacks, not necessary. I'll give it a name here. How about go to go to because the next page we'll be covering it in a little bit more detail. And then we're going to have the target sheet. We're going to have that be page two. I'm going to go OK and OK. Now, if I click on this, it takes me right to the next page. So, as you can see, we've already used the go to sheet action to get to this page. Um, so what have we got here to see? So now I'm going to show you that you can do both of these things at the very much the very same time. So we've got here the bare fatalities split by decade. So we've got, you know, five, one, four, ten, building up and up. So as I select one of these here, 1990s, for example, we're going to get all the records of bear attacks in the 1990s. And you can see here, we've got starting from the top, one attack in February, a few in May, June, July, August, September, October, November. You'll note that May through October is when you'll find most of the bear attacks. And then November through you know, March, February, April, is when there's very little. And that might seem a little bit unusual at first, but then you think, oh, that's when winter's happening. Of course, all the bears must be hibernating. So now you might have noticed that I only selected one sheet here, only selected the brown section, but we went and saw all three types of bear. We had polar bears there, we had black bears there. We can even do it again. I'll go here, click, and I'll go out again, click. One sec, I'll go out again. Sometimes they can be a little bit finicky while we're working here. Um, actually, that's probably something I should very quickly cover. If you look at um, go to sheet by itself will not work just by you clicking it um, when you're in this sheet. Once we're in the actual know, proper look at, look at it. Um, now, 
if you're actually looking at this in presentation mode, you will actually see it. Um, it will actually just work on a single click, but on its own, it will not work that way. So we're just going to select. Pull this away. So how is this acting specifically? Just on the decade and not being affected by the color. That's because I've got a slightly different version of the actions working in here. So we'll go here and as you can see, we've got a lot more things happening right now on this page. So we're gonna go here and what you can see is that we've got um, a, a field source and target field specified here. We've got, you know, the source field is decade and the target field is also decade. So you can open it up and see that we've set both of them working from the bears extract, which is the only data source in this case. Now you could potentially, if there were multiple data sources, specify two different data sources and have it filtering that way. That can be a little bit, a um, little bit complicated. Always remember when you're trying to filter across multiple databases that you need to keep the two, like the to and from fields as similar to each other as is possible. The more similar they are, the easier your time will be. And from there, we've got just a few other things. For example, we've got the go back to filter, which will take us back to the page one, which we so desired. We've got the go to next page, which will take us to a different page entirely. And then we've got the go to sheet one, which will take us to the third page, which was what we were already using. So this one, go to sheet one and go to plus filter were both working every time I selected one of these records. Alrighty. So lastly, I'm going to cover the simplest and perhaps the most powerful tools we've got here, um, parameter actions and web actions. So these ones are interesting. I don't know if, uh, you've had any details on parameters yet. So I'm going to cover those extremely quickly. Parameters are fields with one or more valuable values that you can put in. They can have their value set by user import or by any other thing that you choose to have it work by. You can have them specified by actions and that is what a parameter action is. It is a parameter being set by a field that is chosen by activating the action. So um, in this case, we've got a very simple parameter here. It's a string parameter. I set it up to start with the value of brown bear. Um, and the only values it, will, values it will allow is brown bear, black bear, and polar bear. So how do we get our parameter action working? So this here actually has the parameter action in play. If I open this up and go edit text, you will see that it's going shown below is the Wikipedia entry for the parameters dot type of bear parameter. Now that's a horrifically dry way to run it. Um, but maybe that didn't stick out to you that much. Maybe you noticed here when I clicked on one part or another that when I click on one of these three sections, it switches which web page we've got here. And all three of them are the Wikipedia page for the specific type of bear. We've got the polar bear here, the brown bear here, and the American black bear here. Now, technically the data set only records that it's um, a black bear. It doesn't specify that it's American black bear. I've taken the assumption that considering this data set is based in North America, that this is based in North America, in the American black bear. I think that's reasonable. You're welcome to disagree. That's just what I've gone with. So how do these actions work? It's actually not too dissimilar to what I've already demonstrated. If you go here, I'll open up the action section. We've got two parameters here. We've got the perhaps unhelpfully named parameter one, and we've got the slightly more directly named wiki bear. So we're going to open up parameter one first. Once again, you can see that this is very similar to how the filter action worked. Just going to give this a bit of name. Here we 
foramina. Uh, <laughs> very similar to how the filter action works. We've got the source. We've got a specific worksheet selected here. And we've got what the action is running on, in this case, select. Down here, we've got what the target parameter is. In this case, it's just the type of bare parameter. There's only one parameter after all. You can create a new parameter right from here if you need to. And then we've got what field it's coming from. Now, keep in mind, if your field is not somewhere on the worksheet that you are querying, it has no idea what you want to tell it. So you've got to make sure that the worksheet is available there. So we've got type of bear, that's exactly what we want there. The uncapitalized type of bear is basically just let not the proper capital capitalization. That's what was originally in the system. So that's what um, it's built on, but the type of bear is presentable version. Not important, but you will notice that when we go to sheet here, I've specified three different types. You've got the type of bear, the URL of bear, but you can guess what that's used for. And finally, the capitalized type of bear. And having all three of those is important to get this work sheet to work. This one just obviously provides the colors, but the URL and the type are also very important in making it look right. So, and work right. So as you can see, the parameter is changed each time this is selected. And the word here, whether it's polar bear, brown bear, black bear, changes with it. Now, lastly, how does this web page work? So you've got down here an object called web page. And if you drag that in, or just toss it in, it will tell you to specify a URL. And you can set a number of different things here. We're not going to um, because we've already got one set up. In this case, I set it up with, by default, the Wikipedia entry for the brown bear. This, I, like, I like having a nice, easy starting point, and it's starting with the middle. So how does this work? As you've seen, I've got in here the URL of bear field. And if you look at how the URL of bear field works, you will see it very easily just takes whatever type of bear that we've specified and gives a specific URL for each one. Very, very simple. Now, what you can do if you've got certain web pages, um, for example, a ID field, a web page that source based on an ID field, um, you can build your URL dynamically using that field. So for example, you could specify, oh, you know, send us to this page with ticket ID space, put in that and put in the post, post parts afterwards. That's a perfectly fine way of doing it. Um, like, in fact, that's very useful in a lot of situations where, for example, you'd want to be able to see a very specific page based on the data that you're querying from. So anyway, you grab one of these web page fields and you put it in there. It's not actually necessary for a go to URL workflow to work, but it is going to be what we're using. So open up your dashboard actions. We'll just look at Wikibear again. So again, this part you're all familiar with by this point, I would hope. We've got the source sheets, dashboard four, bear selection, run action on select. The URL, this is telling it what URL to use. You can specify a full URL in here, or you can specify, like for example, the specific field to query from. We're using the URL of bear field. So, whoop. Not two times over though, just the once. That would be a problem. Um, so you can go here and we can test the link. It's open up quite nicely here, you know. Maybe you haven't seen that because that's working, but you can see that it's connected quite successfully. It knows exactly what we're working from here. 
So then you go, these aren't strictly necessary in this case. Um, you know, that's, don't worry about that for now in short. So then you can set the URL target, much like how you're, you've specified what field you're going to before. You can um, specify here how you, what you're actually going to do when you click on it. You can either have it affect a web page object, much like the one here. You can have it open up a new browser tab, or you can have it open up a browser tab only if no web page ob object exists on the dashboard. In this case, we're just going to have it working off this one web page object. Hitting OK, hitting OK. That's going to produce the effect of jumping from page to page. Now, if I were to select it to open up a new browser tab instead, action, go to URL, an action, edit action, new browser tab. Okay, okay. Well, I would need to quickly alter how my share is working. So just give me a very quick sec. But if I were to click on one of these now, it will actually go and open up a whole new page here. You can see that. I would recommend using the web page object version when you're working from the actual, when you're doing a educational or simple display version, it's quite nice to embed the web page in. And you can do this on a more detailed level too. For example, say I just wanted to specify the, I just wanted a picture of the animal to pop up when I selected it. I could do that very easily just by finding out what URL this specific image is from and work with and put that up somewhere quite nice. But that's the sort of situation that you would have a web page object for. Now, where a where um, the new browser tab or go to or new browser tab version of the web action is useful is in the case of a let's call it a private matter. This is that I actually used the um, new browser tab. I'm currently working with the IT support team in MIP. And one thing is that the tickets have a very specific format of their URLs, which involves their ID number. So what I can do is I can set up the URL, take the ID number, click on that and get taken directly to the web page, which allows us to zero in if a ticket looks wrong when I've got it in uh, my reporting system. I sadly can't show you that because this is, you know, IT support. There's some rather delicate things being handled there. So I can't show you any more than my own stories. But regardless, I hope you all have had a good time. Um, I'll make sure that this worksheet is up so that you all can take a look at it on your own time by the time that you actually have this lesson. So with that, uh, thank you all for your time. Um, good luck with your studies. Not produce the desired effects. I'm just going to.